That's a tough one. Yeah. You know, on the one hand, uh, being American is great. <laughs> you know, we have good food, and I, I'm, I have shoes, and my biggest problem every day is like, what am I going to eat today? Not if I'm going to eat. You know, amongst the almost unlimited array of opportunities, you know, what am I going to do? And uh, uh, life is quite good. And uh, yet, um, I think an argument can be made and has been made that um, we are at the vanguard of advocating the most potentially destructive way to live that can be imagined. Uh, in, uh, and I mean that in two ways. One is just psychological, and that is that uh, we are a culture that happens to value things that are not realistically attainable for the average person. And in so doing, render self-esteem uh, impossible to acquire for too many of our citizens. And so one of my main concerns, and it's really one that goes back, it's not original, Becker had it, and, and folks before him had it, and that is that Despite the great material benefits that a capital-based economy affords us and that none of us should uh, be hesitant to recognize or appreciate, that the psychological costs are immensely high. Uh, because when the goal is unlimited wealth, then if you think about it for a moment, no one can ever be successful in that regard. So our standards are unattainable. And because we teach our citizens that if you, if you weren't an idiot and if you tried hard enough, you too could be rich and famous, when that turns out not to be the case, the average person blames, blames themselves and suffers the psychic uh, consequences accordingly. And so that's, uh, I think, a, a daunting problem. And I think it's compounded by the fact that in our own history now, we're probably at the first moment where it's not the case that kids are of necessity going to do better than their parents. You know, I think in every generation so far in American history, you can at least be comforted by the fact that wherever your folks got, you were going to get a little better. And I, I see our kids as really in the psychic ringer because there's rising expectations in a world of diminishing opportunities. And I, I see a lot of kids uh, as psychic casualties of that rather difficult conundrum. So that's one of my concerns is just psychologically speaking, we don't have a set of values in place that renders it acceptable to just be a person of integrity. If you're not rich, if you're not famous, if you're not thinner than a piece of linguine and permanently young, uh, then you've got a problem here. My, my other concern just has to do with the more material consequences of uh, the way that we conduct ourselves uh, as a culture. And this is kind of a long story, and it may or may not ultimately come down to considerations that pertain to death denial. But one argument that uh, is rather radical, but we should at least consider it, is that uh, our approach to life, juxtaposed with the Judeo-Christian tradition, when you take a, a free market, capital-based economy where the goal is to make as much cash as possible, and you juxtapose that with the Christian, the, the Judeo-Christian worldview, which is God created us in His image, and then put everything here for us to use at our leisure. We are, after all, here, according to Genesis, to dominate you know, everything that walks, everything that crawls, everything that flies. Uh, that Really, that's given us license to turn the earth into like a giant big lighter, to just use it our will and to dispose of accordingly. And uh, I don't think it's overly histrionic to note that Americans are responsible for a scandalous amount of environmental destruction and that we use a disproportionate amount uh, of non-renewable resources and that we seem to do so in cavalier disregard of the fact that this is highly problematic and completely contrary to world opinion uh, and that um, that may also be ultimately uh, in the service of death denial. It's only, I think, a naive 
death denying creature that can with a straight face say we've got plenty of food, plenty of air, plenty of water, let's keep cutting down the rainforest, let's keep peeing in the pool and let's keep puking toxic waste into the atmosphere because the economy needs to keep growing. But ironically the economy is an abstraction. Uh, whereas the physical world that we undermine in pursuit of continuing to expand it is quite real.